In today's news, telecommunications companies suspend advertisement amidst controversial cartoon and Governor Augustus J. Jasper pens open letter condemning a local cartoon. And we have all the details of arrests made over the weekend and today all this and so much more when 284 News returns. There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting. For people just like you. We all have our reasons. And for Republic Bank, that reason is you. Every little thing, every big thing. It's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. Welcome everybody. It's Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. Another beautiful day in the British Virgin Islands. I'm Ron Grant. And I am Kyla Kinesha Forbes. We have so much in store for you guys today. We're going to get right into it. A local uh, cartoon by a local news agency here in the beautiful British Virgin Islands has caused quite a stir. Caribbean Cellular Telephone, also known as CCT, uh, public, published sorry, a public press release stating, and I quote, Caribbean Sellers CCT is a proud local business which is primarily owned, managed, and staffed by persons of African descent, and we stand unequivocally with the Black Lives Matter movement against racial discrimination. We would like to state for the record, although we do advertise with the Virgin Islands News Online, we explicitly condemn the cartoon published on June 15, 2020, that appears to depict a capricated of a white man, uh, presumably Governor Augustus J. U. Jaspert, and kneeling on the neck of a black man, presumably Mr. Claude Skelton Klein. This tasteless reenactment of the murder of Mr. George Floyd within a local political context is both offensive and inappropriate. We join the many voices in the British Virgin Islands who have already spoken out against this offense offensive cartoon and we demand that Virgin Islands News Online immediately retract the offensive cartoon and issue an official apology. Uh, CCT in a press release continued by saying, furthermore, CCT will suspend all future advertising with Virgin Islands News Online until the, this offensive cartoon is retracted and we call upon all other advertisers to make a similar pledge. There is simply no place in our beautiful British Virgin Islands community for this kind of callous disrespect of human dignity. Now, continuing on, uh, CCT was the first corporate company to uh, ask uh, Virgin Islands News Online to retract the statement, and after not getting a favorable response, they decided to uh, cancel all uh, advertisements with that. Following that, Digicel BVI, which also advertises with Virgin Islands News Online, have decided to cease all advertising with the local news agency. The company issued a statement saying, and I quote, in light of the, in light of the cartoon which appeared on Virgin Islands News Online with Digicel deems which Digicel deems as offensive and in complete contradiction to the positive and inclusive values which we pride ourselves on as a brand and as a good corporate citizen. We reached out immediately to the media house to register our disapproval and ask them to remove the item from the site. In addition, we will be ceasing advertising with the media house for the time being. Now, this story, Kyla, has caused quite a stir. Uh, it's a continuation, actually, because we had Dr. Michael Turnbull on yesterday, and he spoke uh, about the issue as well. Uh, not only that, but the governor of the Virgin Islands, uh, Governor Augustus J.U. Jasper, is also chiming in on this issue. He said, the highly controversial cartoon has also caught the attention of myself, uh, governor of the Virgin Islands. In an open letter, the governor wrote, and I quote, he said, I was made aware of the cartoon published by Vino today and comments by the host of Honestly Speaking and was appalled and disturbed by what they depicted and insinuated. The horrific death of George Floyd in the United States has moved us all and sent shockwaves around the world. There should be no place of, for racism in our society and I actively stand with those who oppose racism and who are highlighting injustice and prejudice in the aftermath of the tra tragic death of George 
floored. I hope we can come together as a community to say no to racism in any form. It is grossly offensive and unacceptable to use George Floyd's tragic death in this way. Freedom of speech is an important, vitally principle of our society, and the media carries a responsibility to ensure that principle is not abused or operates outside the bounds of this agency. A very powerful statement, Kyla, by uh, the governor of the Virgin Islands, and it is one that we have not really seen before. Um, obviously, this uh, issue has stirred a lot of uh, concern. A lot of persons are speaking out about it. So we see here where uh, not only corporate BVI is retracting their advertisement, which I think is by far uh, one of the most incredible stance we've seen. And I applaud uh, CCT for being the first and taking that stance. And we see where others have followed. Uh, we, in an invited comment, reached out to the Honorable Premier of the Virgin Islands. And he said, and I quote, I denounce racism at any level everywhere in the world. Each of us must be held accountable for our actions. Hence, each of us must guard our actions accordingly. Uh, a very powerful statement again, um, addressing racism, but not necessarily addressing uh, the issue at hand. Right. Uh, we're going to continue to follow it, but we do uh, want to employ, um, particularly because uh, we just had the whole uh, act pass as it pertains to uh, the press and, right. and holding the press accountable. And I think it is absolutely imperative that as a country we come together. Um, some persons may not agree with protesting, but I think uh, pulling corporate uh, business is quite a stance, and I commend all of the persons uh, that uh, have taken a stance in this regard. Most definitely. As the governor said, um, freedom of speech is very important. Yes. But at the end of the day, um, entities, news entities, publishing entities has a responsibility to the people of the Virgin Islands and really um, corporate responsibility. I think that's what we're seeing here from the corporate BVI, from really taking a stance and saying, hey, we are not in cahoots with this, we of do course. not agree with this, and this is our way of showing that this just cannot go on any further. Yes. Well, additionally, Carla, before we continue, uh, this is not the first time that this agency has been caught in that. Uh, we have a clip of a, a similar um, uh, cartoon uh, which shows uh, someone almost being hung. Uh, so this is not the first time that uh, cartoons like this have uh, come to uh, the forefront. Uh, we see it on the screen where it, it appears to be uh, a white man. Uh, it would want to look like the former premier uh, of the Virgin Islands, the Dr. The Honorable D. Orlando Smith, saying, um, um, the person in the cartoon saying, I am still the master. I hold the cards, uh, section 103 in the house. And then we continue with that. So these are not new things coming out of this agency, but I think that it is high time, uh, particularly what that what is going on in our territory that we take a stance and I, I'm happy to see that the territory Most is doing that. Most definitely and um, with this new sto that story that is coming up really and truly these actions cannot discount the work of activists here of in the BVI not. who are really pushing for solidarity. So now we see the people of the BVI really standing in solidarity with the worldwide Black Lives Matter movement. For centuries, black people have faced injustices um, primarily based on the color of one's skin. It's an ongoing fight and we've heard so much about it. Even in 2020, racism is it still exists Indeed. over the years. Many lives has been taken. Trevon Martin, Michael Brown, Brianna Taylor, Ahmad Aberry, most recently Rashad Brooks. And unfortunately, so many blacks lives have been lost simply, as I said before, because of the color of their skin on May 25th. And you stated earlier, George Floyd, he died while in custody of Metropolitan um, Police, the gruesome encounter was caught on tape for approximately nine minutes. I think it was about eight minutes and 46, 46 seconds. seconds. Yeah. Um, this police officer, he knelt on Floyd's neck and Floyd indicated many times that he couldn't breathe. And this is something that we've been talking about mm -hmm. in the media over and over again. And this encounter really ignited protests throughout the entire United States and even in other countries. And other countries have really showed their solidarity and showed their alliance to this movement yes. earlier this month right across the waters in the USVI. Residents joined together to protest against the injustices experienced by black persons daily. And now the BVI is joining in on this movement on June 20. 
20 at 2020, the BVI will march peacefully in conjunction with the Kneel With Me movement. The protest will commence at 3 p.m. at the Noah Lloyd Park to the Queen Elizabeth Park. Um, we spoke to one of the organizers of this protest, and he basically explained why it is important to stand in solidarity and protest here in the BVI. Let's hear what he had to say. First and foremost, thank you for having me and supporting our efforts by assisting with the promotion of the cause. We feel as though a demonstration is necessary in the BVI, not only for George Floyd, but against racial injustices in America, our home, and the world moreover. Although slavery was abolished in the late 1800s, people of the African diaspora have been fighting to be treated as more than subhuman for generations. And I think it is time that we finally put that fight to an end. I don't want to live in a world where these, the, with these stories, sorry, of hate are stories told by my grandparents, parents, myself, and my children after me. We as a territory are not immune to the effects of racism and have silently allowed it to fester within our waters. We want to bring this fight to the forefront because we believe that confrontation is the only true catalyst for change. The march will be taking place on Saturday, June 20th, beginning at 3 p.m. The route will be from the Noel Lloyd Positive Action Movement Park to the Queen Elizabeth II Park. There we had Mr. Nikoi Hendrickson, one of the co-organizers. A group of organizers came together to yeah. put together this, this protest and really showing that the BVI is in alliance and really want to be there for our sisters and brothers in the United States. Yes. We continue to speak about this, Ron, the fact that we must show alliance, although this is not knocking on our door um, directly. Mm. As black persons, we understand somewhat what um, black persons have to go to on a regular basis. And to address the story that you spoke about before, yeah. it shows even more so why we must be responsible alliance. Well, it's funny, Kyla, you said that it's not knocking on our doors, but I think the prior story of the cartoon shows that it really is okay. knocking on our doorsteps, whether we want to believe it or not. Uh, these, uh, as funny as some persons uh, weirdly might take the cartoon, um, it really solidifies the thought process. Um, when someone is uh, literally begging for their life and saying, I can't breathe, I don't understand how a father, a son, uh, I don't care who you are in your profession, knowing um, that you uh, affect lives and you are touched by persons and persons are touched by your lives and understanding your influence, I don't see that as a joke and I don't understand how that could be um, construed as such. But one of the things that I'm really happy and really proud of, again, um, you guys might hear me say this a lot in the newscast, but I'm really proud of uh, the youth of the territory, the younger generation, whether you like it or not, we are taking leaps and bounds and we are leading and you better follow. And that's an example of the protests we see, a young generation leading the chart and they must be commended and we do wish them the very best. Um, they have a full support in the protest that's going to be coming up. Most definitely. Viewers still ahead, the territory Stony Corals under threat from bacterial disease and boulders advise not to sail in exclusion zones all this and so much more when 2A4 news returns is business slow cash flow down hosting an upcoming event we can help advertise with 2A4 media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest this could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. For news now, the Minister of Natural Resources, Labor and Immigration, Honorable Vincent Whitley, has issued a call for community and non-governmental organizations to do their part to fight against the stony coral tissue loss disease. Honorable Vincent Whitley, in a statement during the night sitting of the second session of the Fourth House of Assembly, explained that the bacterial disease is affecting stony corals in the territory's water and if left unchecked can result in a major impact to about 22 different types of corals which are key structures that keep reefs 
give their complexity, providing protection from storms and is the home of a variety of fish and species. Honorable Whitley added that the bacterial disease found its way to the waters of the Virgin Islands from the Florida Reef Track where it was first observed in 2014 and has spread throughout the Caribbean ever since. The minister stated that the bacteria has now made its way to popular diving sites including Angel Reef, Ring Dove, the Indians, and the Wreck of the Rhone, the only marine park in the territory. The bacteria is not harmful to humans, but it is an added stress factor for corals coupled with climate change, sedimented um, loads from land reclaim, and ocean acidification which weakens their density and makes coral reefs more susceptible to diseases. Treatments for the bacterial disease have shown results on a small scale application as much as 2% daily. A strike team has been proposed after the Environment and Climate Change Unit lost its vessel which was used to do most of the coral reef monitoring prior to the hurricanes of 2017. The team is comprised of public officers from the Ministry of Natural Resources, Labor and um, Emigration, I mean, the Natural Parks Trust and the Department of Agriculture and Fisheries to accomplish the task with the aid of NGOs and volunteers. Minister Wheatley also mentioned a potential citizen science system that could utilize such methods while NGOs and volunteers are out on their dive excursions. He said the BVI have over 84,000 square kilometers of ocean space and approximately 78 thousand acres of reef. The area is critical to our existence, but the government cannot do it alone. It needs to be a team effort where we all must work together in saving our coral reefs. Honorable Wheatley called on everyone to work together to save the ocean, the territory, and ourselves. We all need to become more responsible Indeed. about our natural environment as we have an obligation to do it for now and for the generations to come, he said. Kyla, this is a very important story. I don't think the average person understands the importance of our, our coral reefs and mm -hmm. our waters, and I think it's imperative that we understand that, and we do everything we can to protect our waters. This is, as we call it, nature's little secrets, uh, but it's our bread and butter, and we have to protect it. I do agree. I think we look at the beauty every single day, yeah. but we have we to... take it for granted sometimes. Yeah, we have to remember the little small elements that really makes us nature's little secret are blue waters. Yes. So we have to take care of our environment. Um, as you said, a very important um, story. And as he said, it's it, it takes a team effort. Indeed. Well, continuing on uh, with our waters, we have more stories coming up. A boaters advise not to sail in exclusive zone. All this and more when 284 News returns. Yes. You want a top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Eh? You want top of power? Huh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You want top of power? Eh? Viewers, welcome back. You're watching To It For News. Continuing on as it pertains to our waters, the government of the Virgin Islands has introduced an exclusion zone that would limit marine traffic as a result of COVID-19. Premier and Minister of Finance, the Honorable Andrew A. Foy, said the unrestricted marine traffic and activity will be allowed between only 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. The Premier said in a statement, and I quote, unrestricted marine traffic and activity will be permitted east of 64 uh, at 38.2. 300 uh, westward on the south side of Tortola and an area east of the diving line between the westernmost tip of Joss Van Dyke and westernmost tip of Tortola. The territory's leader further stated that traffic through the exclusion zone and outside of the navigational limits is restricted and requires pre-clearance from the multi-agency operational command prior to transit. Premier Foy added, 
that vessels fitted with automatic identification systems technology will be required to use the same while navigating within the territory's waters, especially in the exclusion zone, to make them easily identifiable to law enforcement from a distance. Licensed or approved fisher folk uh, can contact 311 in advance uh, for a departure of their approval if they wish to traverse the exclusion zone. Borders that enter the exclusion zone without uh, prior permission, of course, will be in violation of the curfew order number 21, order 2020, and can be penalized. All cargo vessels and other vessels that have been granted permission by, of course, the Ministry of Health and Social Development, Environmental Health Division, and the Joint Border Task Force to arrive or depart from the territory of the Virgin Islands are to arrive uh, without exempted. Uh, the exclusion zone is an area west, uh, as we said before, in the south side of Tortola. This area is loosely described as a line between the westernmost tip of Norman Island and Nanny Key and remains clear of USVI territorial waters and west of a, a dividing line formed between the westernmost tip of Joss Van Dyke and westernmost tip of Tortola. Now, the exclusion zone of Joss Van Dyke and western tip of Anigata, um, again, and speaking about our very important uh, waters, it is very important, Kyla, that we continue to protect and adhere uh, as it pertains to border protection um, in midst of COVID-19. Most definitely. This is something that um, persons have really been calling for, yes. for um, borders to be back out on the waters. This is a, a huge part of our culture going out on the waters yeah, yeah. on Sundays, um, during the week. Um, people have really missed that, but we want to encourage persons to stay in um, protocol, to yeah. stay in within these um these divided lines, Very most important. definitely. Yeah. And so, continuing on, uh, the CHIP, the Complete Health Improvement Program, which you guys have heard us speak many, many times ab about. It's a 10-week course that uh, teaches participants how to boost their health and lead a healthier lifestyle. And it was officially launched in the Virgin Islands yesterday, June 15, 2020. CHIP was uh, founded in the United States of America in 1988 by Dr. Hans D.L. Now, the Ministry of Health is the holder of the license to operate CHIP in the Virgin Islands, and CHIP was selected by the government of the Virgin Islands for the reduction and prevention of non-communicable diseases, or NCDs. Now, CHIP is scientifically based with proven results in preventing and reversing NCDs and their risk factors. It will be used as a means to mitigate the modifiable risk factors uh, prevalent in the territory amongst the adults adult population, sorry, between the ages of 25 to 64. Now, of course, we were present at the launch yesterday, which included speakers such as the Deputy Premier and Minister of Health and Social Development, the Honorable Carvin Malone himself, Chairperson of CHIP Committee, Mrs. Adelma Maduro, Medical Director of the National Health Insurance, Dr. Harlan Vantapool, CHIP Facilitator, Ms. Julie Leonard, and, of course, uh, CHIP uh, advocate Cromwell Smith. Now we took some time, of course, to sit down with one of the highly trained CHIP facilitators, Mrs. Arona Forbes, to discuss what exactly persons can expect from uh, CHIP and so much more. Take a look at my interview with her. Pleasant good day, Ms. Forbes. Welcome to 284 Media. Thank you for having me. Let's begin this conversation by telling the viewing audience why exactly did you decide to become a CHIP facilitator? Okay, as as a former agriculturist, where I work with the government, I saw over the years the amount of pesticides that um, have affected the soil type, and also if it affects the soil type, it will affect the crop in which it is grown, and that will have an effect on our bodies. So I thought it best to um, find different ways, alternative ways, whereby you can help have more healthier crops for our bodies so that we can remain healthier Wonderful. and live a longer life. Now, tell me about a little bit about the process. Explain to me the process in becoming a chip facilitator. What was that like? Uh, in order to become a chip facilitator, you had to be trained. And we were trained for over uh, a week in two different instances. And we had to go through a number of videos that were shown. We had to actually break out and do different sessions. So, um, and also give your, your, your experience and how you would have seen if there was a change in your eating habits. Wonderful. Now, some of the areas, tell me about some of the areas that you, you are covering. 
during this training process? So one of the areas we are covering is um, your weight, the, your weight loss, um, how you would start off. You have an area whereby you are starting off with, say for instance, I start off at, at 100 and then you are going to be doing different blood tests over the period of time along with your exercising and changing your healthy ha with to healthy habits. And then from there, at the end, we are also going to be checking, again, your status to make sure that there was truly a difference in the, um, the training and the program. Okay. What can persons expect who are going to be signing up for the uh, CHIP program? What can they expect? Well, I, I, they, they can expect something wonderful because you are going to see a difference in your change of behavior once you um, make the change. You, you have a community-based um, program as well whereby you, you want a healthier community so that we can live longer lives and you're going to have accountability because you are going to be signing up with someone who can also help you be more accountable. Because when we are on the journey by ourselves, at times we fall by the wayside, but when you have somebody that you can be accountable to, it goes a long way. What do you think persons in the Virgin Islands should be paying most attention to as it pertains to their health? Well, chronic diseases is, is on the rise. Um, high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, those various things. And with these different change in habits, Healthy health habits, you, you can either arrest, prevent, or reverse these various chronic diseases. And throughout your time, not only in the training, but as an agriculturist in working uh, with the government of the Virgin Islands, have there been any misconceptions uh, in the public as it pertains to health that you have come across? And what would you say to persons who may feel as though uh, they're not at risk because they're slim or they're not at risk because uh, they're not over a certain weight? Well... It has nothing to do with the, the size of your body. It has to do with the type of food. Whatever you put in will have an effect on your body. So if you are putting in food that are consumed with a lot of pesticides, that is what is going to end up in your body. And over a period of time, you are going to wake up one day with a headache. You may be a slim, 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 but you wake up with a headache. And all of these things are attributed to the fatty acids over a period of time with the different chemicals that we consume from food. Now, one of the things that we've noticed uh, throughout the process of, of learning about CHIP is that a lot of our behaviors and patterns that we've adopted uh, culturally, particularly amongst the younger generation, it could be uh, the social drinking of alcohol or the usage of tobacco, speak to the younger generation, that 30-year-old that bracket, 24-30-year-old uh, bracket uh, for a little bit. Encourage them a little bit as it pertains to what steps they could be doing to move towards a healthier lifestyle because they are uh, within the bracket of persons that CHIP targets? Well, as, as, as the target group, when you consume alcohol, even though you may not see the effect right away over a period of time that, that alcohol causes cirrhosis of the liver, so you want to change your behavior from today because whatever you do today affects you tomorrow. You may not see it today, but in the, the latter part of your life, you are going to see the different effects that you have made over your period of life, and it will have an effect on you. Before we go, Mrs. Forbes, kindly give one last word to the general public, those who might be uh, still on the fence about whether they should participate or sign up in CHIP. Uh, just give them some encouragement uh, and some last words. Well, to the general public, I would like to say CHIP is about your complete health improvement program, and it deals with alternative ways of lifestyle. So you don't have to be on medicines all the time. It can help you prevent arrest, and it can reverse chronic diseases that have affected you. We have local persons here in the BVI that have testimonies to these effects. So I encourage you, those who are on the fence, to come out, join the program, and change your lifestyle. That was CHIP facilitator Mrs. Arona Forbes, uh, who is a former agriculturist, or still is, I think, an agriculturist. Uh, I want to encourage the general public, uh, as we uh, strongly support living a healthier lifestyle, CHIP is super important. Uh, these classes are efficient and super productive. Uh, they really help 
person's uh, channel their way forward as it pertains to their health. Uh, so I want to encourage persons to take advantage of this uh, through the Ministry of Health um, and just lead a healthier lifestyle. Most definitely. Um, Ron, you are a CHIP ambassador. Ad yes. Yeah, advocator. So as you said, just going forward, encouraging persons to be a part, learn more about it. Indeed. Um, definitely sounds like a really good initiative. But yeah. All right. Yeah, so viewers, that is it for today's news roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at 284media.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook at 284media and 284BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. I am Kyla Kenisha Ford. And I'm Ron Grant. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.